Cisco VPN, Firepower Threat Defense, and Microsoft. Microsoft's Azure AD with multi-factor authentication using dynamic access policies with SAML attributes. We've got a couple of use cases here, one of which is an HR user. We're going to identify the HR user using the department SAML attribute. We're going to define that and we're going to apply an HR access control list that just blocks them from going to 1.1.1. The next use case is an IT user. Again, we're going to identify them using the SAML attribute department and we're going to give it a display message of dynamic access policy unrestricted, no ACL. And then finally, the sales dynamic access policy. Um, we got an ACL that's applied. We're not going to allow it to get to 8.8.8.8 and everything else is fine, but we're going to use the groups attribute and you can see that identifier is a unique object identifier defined within Azure, and it equals the sales group. I'll show you that later, specifically where that attribute is. But first, let's go to Objects, Objects Management, and we're gonna upload the host scan package required to scan the host. And so we'll go ahead into Objects to VPN. We'll go to AnyConnect file. I've already uploaded the file, but I'll show you the steps here to do that. So all you have to do is go to add any connect file. There'll be a collection of different uh, modules that you could add. You give it a name and you select the actual package of interest. In our case, the host scan package. And once you're uploaded, you're good to go here. All right, let's go back to dynamic access policies. Now, I've already created my dynamic access policy, but if you're going to start from fresh, all you do is create dynamic access policy. This is where you're going to assign your host scan package to. Once that's done, then you're going to get into the specific dynamic access policies as we're doing here. So we're going to create three of them, a sales, IT, and HR. We're going to walk through each one of them. I've already created them, and I'm showing you an example. If you're going to add one, this is how you would do it. So let's go to each one of them. We'll go to sales and here we've got a display a user message and it's going to actually just say this is sales dynamic access policy and then that unique identifier that's what we we're going to use but I want to call that out when we connect so we know that we actually connected the sales dynamic access policy. We're also going to leverage a sales ACL. We're going to restrict the access to that group of users. That SAML attribute is actually defined here. This is the attribute ID is called groups and then that unique identifier. So where do you get that? Well, let's first jump to the groups and look up the group identifier for sales. And you can see here, uh, let me just move things around here. You can see the sales group or object ID or that identifier. That's what we're going to use. It's going to be sent back when we authenticate to Firepower and then Firepower can use that attribute in our case to enforce the dynamic access policy to the sales group users. So how do we get that? How do we get that group or object identifier sent back within SAML when we connect? Well, we go back to that uh, application that we created in the previous videos and we're going to go to attributes and claims after we click on set up single sign-on and when we do that we've got a couple things. Now I've already created them here, but let's just walk through. We've got department and groups that I've added. So to add something of a user attribute, we can come in here and give it a name. I'm going to use department, but since I already have one, I got to say department one. And then we're going to use any one of the source attributes. In this case, user.department is what we're going to use. Now I'm not going to save this out because I have one already called department, but you get the idea. Now, if I wanted to add a group claim, all I do is click add a group claim here, and I've already done that, and you can only add one, at least based on the free licensing that I have. And we're gonna pull all security groups, and I'm gonna use a custom, uh, customized group claim, and I'm gonna call it groups, and I save that out, and that's it. That's all I have to do in order to get those attributes sent back. Now, let's go back into users real quick. And I'll show you where the department field is. So let's go into sales one. And you can see there it is, sales. That's a, a, an, a, an, um, 
an attribute within the users that I could leverage. And there's many different attributes there. Now let's go ahead and open up a new tab here for objects. Cause what I want to do is cross reference the ACLs that we've created here. So all we do is access list. It's extended in this case, we're going to use the sales uh, ACL obviously is assigned to it. And all we're doing is saying VPN net object. So that's all the VPN IPs going to that destination of 8.8.8.8 uh, block it. And then everything else is allowed. IT, this is an unrestricted policy. So there's no ACL tied to these individuals, um, but the criteria is department and then within department. So in the user, and we could have used the group, but instead I, I wanted to use a different attribute. So we're gonna use the department attribute um, that could be found within the user's object. And finally, we have the HR dynamic access policy. Again, we're going to give a display message this time with an ACL uh, for HR users, and we're going to use that department HR attribute as well. Let's check out HR and we can see the ACL here is uh, block anything going to 1.1.1.1. Everything else is allowed. All right, now we've got all the pieces created. Let's just go back to the remote access policy and show you how we get this assigned to a specific access policy that we're interested in. So we'll go ahead and hit edit. This was obviously shown in a previous video. And right at the top right here is where we can select what dynamic access policy we want associated to this particular remote access uh, VPN configuration. And that's it. Once we do that, we hit deploy. We're good to go. I'm coming over here to active sessions. We'll come back to this shortly. Let's do some testing. All right. We're already on a box here. Don't worry about the current logged in user. We really don't care. We're going to VPN each time. Um, and so we're going to enter in the username and password. So let's go ahead and do that. The first test is going to be that HR user. We're going to go ahead and hit next. We'll put in our password and it's going to prompt for MFA multi-factor and I'm seeing that now on my phone approve all right looks like things are happening and look at there's the default message that we get for that connection profile and we're connected but wait a minute ah here it is right there's the message this is the HR DAP policy that's been applied there's some restrictions perfect now let's see if those restrictions are real. So we'll go ahead and um, maybe we'll do a couple ping tests just to see if we have connectivity um, to what we should have connectivity to and we're being limited to what we should be limited to. So we know that we've got an ACL of blocking 1.1.1.1 and if everything is working as it should, we should be, yes, and we are blocked. Let's show access list and let's um, just look specifically for the HR user here. Let's, well, let's fix that HR. Let's move that over a little bit more here. Let's see, and we could see a hit count of four on that top ACL here, there it is. Okay, now let's just go ahead and ping something external, google.ca. And we can see that we can do that. So we're doing some hair pinning there. All right, now let's go ahead and test out that IT user. So go ahead and connect, put in our username and enter our password. Let's go ahead and do that here, IT1. Put in the magical password. And once we do that, we should get the prompt for MFA. And I'm seeing that now. Let's go ahead and hit approve. Say yes. And there's our default message. That makes sense. Go ahead and hit accept. And we should get a message just like we've seen before. But it should be tied to the IT dynamic access policy. Give it a second here. And there it is. This is the IT dynamic access policy unrestricted. Okay, well, it can say that all it likes. Let's test it. Let's see if it actually works here. So let's say okay here. Let's open up PowerShell. Now 
Now I'm running multiple systems on Intel NUC, so it's pretty, it can be slow at times, um, but certainly usable in the lab environment. Here I'm pinging 8.8.8.8, which I should be able to, 1.1.1.1. We know that's another ACL for another user. We're able to, and google.ca. So we're able to get anywhere. Um, there's no restrictions or appears no restrictions are on that particular user. Now let's go ahead and connect as our final user here. And this one, it's going to be sales one. Now I happened to log into this machine as sales one because I didn't run that test right away. I had some other things that I was doing. Here nor there, it doesn't really matter. It matters when we log in to VPN, not the machine per se. So we'll go ahead and we'll approve um, that multi-factor. Go ahead and uh, respond. There's our default uh, banner. We should get a message here as well. Establishing VPN, configuring, everything looks good. Now we could have been more grant. There's that, there's that message there, right? And there's that group identifier because we pasted it in as part of the message. But we could have been more granular. We could have looked for is firewall enabled or something specific on the endpoint as well, right? This I'm only using the attributes out of AD or Azure AD, um, but you could be very granular in what you're picking here. Now we know they can't get to 8.8.8.8 and that shows there. We know we can get everywhere else. Let's just show the access list. And we can see the top one there, there's a, a hit count of eight and yeah, they're both at eight. So let's go ahead and just, just so you can see it being real, let's ping 8.8.8 .8 and we should see an increment of, of that. Let's go ahead and we can see that it's been updated. So we've seen an increment in hit count on that ACL. So it worked. All right, last thing we'll do is in, in the active sessions, we see sales one is logged in. We can log them out from here. Again, I've shown this before, but just uh, highlighting uh, the ability to disconnect a user if you choose to do so. And takes a minute and there it is. And that's it, dynamic access policy and firepower.